Hey, hey, I'm Keith, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to jazz up, no, jazz up, what am I, 60? I'm gonna show you how to spruce up your fire, no, this is not a blog. I'm gonna show you how to add a pop of color, no, this is not HGTV. I'm gonna show you how to increase your home's value by up to 20% just by updating your fire, no, that's just a bold-faced lie. I'm gonna show you how to turn this plain white mantle into this. Oh, All right, so this one started by manhandling some white oak. I was just kind of moving it around and double checking, kind of figuring out what I wanted to be the top, the front, the sides, and labeling as such before heading over to the miter saw to cut things to length rough length at this point. Now I'm building this white oak mantle for the same people that I built the white oak floating console table for. If you wanna go check out that video after this one is over, I'll put a link on screen and in the description below because hey, I'm at your service. So to give me a nice straight reference edge on one edge of these boards, I use my track saw. This will give me a nice, clean, straight reference edge to run along my table saw fence when I rip these to width. But first, I needed to plane them down to final thickness of three quarters of an inch. And then with my table saw set to 45 degrees, I could put the first long edge bevel on the bottom of the mantle. Whoop, give the tripod a good whack. And then onto the top section, nice long rip. Move that out of the way delicately. That's a very fragile edge once you cut a 45 on it. So now this is the front, so it requires two 45 degree bevels, one on the top and one on the bottom, as you can see here. Now, since I'm making pretty much a mitered box, well, not pretty much, it is a miter box. The miter cuts are pretty critical in order for this thing to fit together without any gaps. So not only does that angle need to be 45, but those cuts also need to be square in order to put this thing together and get a square box. So you really have to make sure your miter saw is tuned in exactly to get this to work. Now you could do this on the table saw if you have enough room left and right of the blade, I do not. Now just in case you missed what I actually did there, so I cut the two ends of the mantle out of the same piece as the front because I want that grain to wrap around and be continuous on the front. Now I could cut the 45s on the ends of my top and bottom before doing a dry fit. Now I did mention that these angles all need to be 45. However, some guys will overcut these angles to say 45 and a quarter or 45 and a half. That way when they fold it together, the tips of those miters touch and there's no chance for a gap. But for me, that just leaves a lot less glue surface when you're assembling this, so possibly not as strong. So for the dry assembly, I'm using clear packing tape here after I line up the miters and then you can basically fold it together, hence the term miter fold. And here with the ends, same process, basically checking all your joinery, making sure it fits together nice and tight. And it looks like that corner will go together nicely, nice sharp crisp edges. Then I could pop on the top and make sure that's all gonna slide into place and fit correctly. And now I can lay out the position for my lamello biscuits, and I can tell you straight up, these are really not necessary for assembly of this mantle. Using glue and the packing tape like you see to hold it together is perfectly fine. But I own the lamello, so I like to use it. Now, I will be using Clamex connectors on this. So if you haven't seen me use these before, they are similar to a knockdown furniture type connector. But the real value of these is once you apply the glue, you turn that Allen key and it clamps the joint shut. So you don't even need to put actual clamps on there. After I cut my slots, I need to cut an access hole for the Allen key, which will close the Clamex. Then I could pop in a few connectors and just do a dry fit to make sure everything closes up tight and fits together without any gaps. And with a quick turn of the Allen key, that Clamex engages and gives a nice tight joint. And now to check the fit of the long top, that fits good, the corner joint looks good, so now I can lamello that. And that is the last of the pieces that need to be lamelloed. So now it was time for glue up. And I'm actually not using wood glue on this. I'm using Total Boat's Thixo Fast Cure Epoxy. Why? Well, I have kind of fell in love with this stuff recently. I love the consistency of it, how it's nice and thick and doesn't run all over the place. You get about 10 to 12 minutes of open time, but it's easy to apply and spread around and obviously rock solid once it's cured. Holy heck, did I just say cured instead of cured? 
Yikes. So let me rephrase. The cure time on this is roughly four hours, which is straight up craziness. I mean, seriously, you glue this thing up and four hours later, you can install it. It's fully cured. <laughs> I just said cured again. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I make my way down the line, tightening all the Allen keys and getting nice clamping pressure on that miter joint. And then I can work on the ends. And I'll be honest, putting all these little connections right in the corner and trying to gain access with the Allen key proved to be a little bit difficult once that top piece was put on. And if I ever do one of these again, I will just use glue and clear packing tape in those corners to clamp it shut until it's dry. It proved to be so difficult, in fact, that I somehow whacked the camera and turned off recording while I was doing this last piece. So we'll fast forward to where it was all together, and I'm just using a screwdriver here to round over those edges while the glue is still wet, just to seal up that corner nicely. I can wipe off the excess, and I did have a few knots to stabilize, so I'm just using some Total Boat High Performance Epoxy. And then I can bust out the torch to get out any air bubbles. And then once that's cured, sand everything flush, and then get to applying the finish. I'll be using Rubio Monocoat Natural. This is the same finish I used on the White Oak Floating Console for the same client, so everything will match. So I distribute the hard wax oil with a little yellow spreader, work it in with a white Scotch-Brite pad, let it sit for five to 10 minutes and wipe off any excess using a lint-free microfiber cloth. Now, since this mantle is being mounted above a fireplace, the client asked if I could come up with something where they could hang their stockings from during the holiday season and then take them down and not be noticeable. So I'm using some threaded inserts, putting in with some star bond, and then the client will be able to screw in some J hooks like this during the holiday season and then take them down with little or no evidence that they were ever there until next season comes around. I'll leave a link in the description below for both the J-hooks and the threaded inserts I use. Oh, hey, did you know that I'm on a podcast called the Shop Sounds Podcast? It includes myself, Jason from Bourbon Moth Woodworking, and Nick Key from Key Woodworks. We're a woodworking podcast about nothing. So check the link below to tune in and subscribe. And it's not really about nothing. I mean, even nothing is something. And then it was install day. And what you're witnessing here is plan A, which was me going right over the existing mantle, sliding that in place. And then I put some green tape down just as some protection on the surface so I could break out one of the most annoying sounding tools ever made, the oscillating multi-tool to scribe away the old molding so I could slide the new mantle in place. And if you've never used one of these tools before, the sound is kind of like a herd of bees at a fever pitch all the way up to 12. It's a reverberation in your eardrums that makes you instantly angry the second you hear it. But it's a super useful tool. So what I'm doing here is drawing a scribe line because I did not want to hold the multi-tool upside down and try to scribe this line all the way across. So with some star bond and green tape, I'm just gluing on a sacrificial board here is basically a guide rail so I can make a nice clean straight cut all the way down the length of the fireplace. Now you also might be asking, hey, why didn't you just kind of scribe and notch the new mantle around the existing trim to make it fit rather than making all kinds of notches in the mantle itself? Well, that just seems like a lot more work and a little more dangerous because you make a bad cut on that mantle, it's over. And what you're seeing here in the freeze frame is plan B, which was to completely rip off the old mantle and install this fresh. The old mantle was just sagging a little too much, so I thought it best to basically start fresh. I'll glue and screw on a ledger board and then attach the mantle. Now, to be sure I got a nice tight fit against the wall, I put a back bevel on all the edges all the way around using a belt sander. This is kind of like when you're installing a filler strip on cabinets where you want to kind of back bevel that edge so just the tip is touching the wall and the rest of the thickness isn't interfering with the fit at all. So I'm just using a 2x4 and some construction adhesive here. Then I could attach the ledger board to the wall, making sure I get good bite on those screws into the existing framing. Then it was time to take the mantle and slide it over that ledger board and into place, making sure I have equal spacing on each side. And then with a couple dabs of construction adhesive on the ledger board and underneath the mantle just to secure it in place while I drive some screws. You don't really need a lot here, folks, to keep this in place, so there's no need to overdo it. And here's just a couple of up-close beauty shots of that beautiful white oak. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you'd like, and hit that notification bell so that telltale 
goes off whenever I put out a new video.